Who was it that said, can you smell what The Rock's cooking? That was probably The Rock, right? That was him. I think it was him. But not only smell, touch, sight, sound, all these kind of things are things we experience in our everyday life. And what happens if they are differences in different places and different cultures? We'll talk about that today. Stick around. I was thinking that was kind of a rather ethnocentric introduction, wasn't it? If you're not into, I never heard that phrase. If, I'm sorry. What, what is that phrase? Of what cooking something? So um, the Rock, the actor, right? The the Rock. Um, what's his real name? I forget his real name now. Dwayne Johnson. In his wrestling days, yeah, yeah, that's right, Dwayne Johnson. In his wrestling days, that was his call. That was his. Can you smell what the Rock's cooking? Right. That was his. Ah, big, that was his see? big phrase. That is a pop cultural <laughs> reference that just a... <laughs> should be yeah. careful with those, right? Should be careful. Welcome, everybody. Episode 79, Two Chaps, Many Cultures. We are talking about the five senses. And uh, of course, this came out of a conversation that Christian and I. You, this is how last minute these things are. Is sometimes we just hate. We no, find... we planned this weeks ahead. Don't give that away. <laughs> <That's God. right. laughs> There's spreadsheets and charts and all kinds of stuff. Absolutely. But no, we, we, we were talking about this early on in a big group, great group discussion where we started to talk about the sense of smell, its impact on how we. Uh, we, we are affected by that in different cultures, different countries. Um, and I've talked about this before with clients and, and they have a lot, if, they, if they've had experience, they go, yes, I know this place smells differently. It's, uh, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what we're talking about today. We're going to talk about the, of course, other five senses. There's other things that uh, can, yeah, can affect it as well, right? In, in, in my language, there is a phrase, or my first language, there is a phrase that if you don't like somebody, we say, I can't smell that person, as in, I don't want to smell that person. I, I I cannot bear the smell or the odor that person emits. So that's how strongly connected our emotions are to our uh, five senses, to the sensory input, right? So some of you who have known me in, in for a while in different capacities know that I'm a huge fan of neurolinguistic programming as it pertains to the way we experience the world and there's the five senses are are critical in how we how we make uh, how, how we receive the world around us right that that's all we have we have five gadgets built in with which we can experience we can see vision we can hear auditory we can taste um, with our mouth or our lips or our tongue that's um, gustatory. We can smell that's olfactory. And then we have the sense of touch with our hands or all of our skin that's uh, the kinesthetic. So V-A-K-O-G, if you will, the, the vision, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, gustatory. Those are the five senses with, with which we compute the world in which we operate. And no wonder that if something smells or tastes different that it will evoke certain emotions in us right what type of smell or taste is is really important for you brett to make you feel like you're there vegemite vegemite <laughs> how, how, how can you how, how would you describe that how what, what does uh, it taste like it's very it, it's very um it, it's a very unique experience both uh you know on a couple of different sensory levels the smell uh certainly the taste um and for something that is quite confronting for many people in other cultures, it is absolutely a, a, a real grounding uh, experience for me to, to slap a bit of Vegemite and toast, right? And well, it, what does it, it is, compare to? If, if, if we've never eaten Vegemite, I have never eaten Vegemite. Yeah. Give, give, give me a comparison. What smells or tastes similar? You know, it, it's, it just stumps everybody. It, it's, it's an intense, salty, 
um, it, 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 it can, it can really infuse. It's almost like it's not, it's nowhere near that experience of kind of wasabi, you know, wasabi fills the, the, the senses, it fills the head with, uh, it's similar to that, but without the spice. So there's kind of like this, this real total invasion in your headspace of the taste and then, uh, of then of the smell, then you've got the taste. So, I mean, that's, uh, that is obviously what something that is, and of sight as well. It's black, it's jet black. So mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. something that necessarily looks appetizing on the surface. You know, it's, it's, it's not like it has a consistency of peanut butter, but just imagine jet black peanut butter, right? And it, it, it's kind of one of those examples where I often use it as a touch point to say, if you just approached a piece of Vegemite without the jar and all that kind of stuff, you would you you would kind of just throw it away. <laughs> you'd, you would go, what do I do? Do I plug my exhaust system up with my, you know, on my car with this stuff or something? I don't know. But uh, and then people eat it, right? And and so this is this is really impactful. So I, even with uh, in particular cultures, I say if there's anything in your childhood you grew up with. When you go and live in another culture and you don't have the accessibility to just go down to the corner store and buy it. See, my what wife my, my wife is clear about this. She says you obviously have a feeling around this, right? <laughs> I do. And, uh, just because my honey's watching, she says, Ich kann dich gut riechen, which means she she likes the smell I give off. So I'm I'm, I'm very happy to to right. hear that and, and feel right. that. Um Cecilia says fermented soy and black beans, pungent and salty. There we go. So she explained it for us. Thank you, okay. Cecilia. Yeah, that's that, that's it. And yeah, I mean, it's very pun it, it, pungent is the word, right? That really evokes that the sound of that word, right? Pungent, it really evokes uh, immediately. People go, oh, now I get it, right? Mm -hmm. So there again, you you can say to somebody, pungent is something that that really infuses it. Right. Yeah. So, so what these sensory experiences do with us, whether we smell it or taste it or hear a certain melody or a sound or whether we see something, whether we we have the touch of a certain fabric texture, surface, um, temperature, wet, dry, whatever it may be, th those those emotions, those sensory memories are connected to our emotional states, right? So yeah. you smell and taste Vegemite and it it evokes a memory. It brings up an emotional state, which it sounds like it's a positive one for you, right? Absolutely. Um, although, so although Cecilia asked, is it on potatoes? No, that would not be a positive thing for me, no. <laughs> but, right. that, but again, that's a cultural thing, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it is, you know, ni nice warm toast, right? It, it is a... It is something that really kind of makes me go, ah, oh, okay. That's yeah, th th this is what puts us into a place of belonging, right? If if yeah. if the if some if something that is anchored in our minds with these five sensory experiences with a positive emotion, if if we can, let's say in NLP we say if we can fire that anchor off, if we can recreate that emotion by by entering one of these five or maybe all five of these sensory data inputs then we feel like ah yeah i'm there christina says something that that is very much true for me even though i'm not italian but christina is italian and she for her it's cappuccino in the morning by the way for those of you watching cappuccino is only in the morning no milk on coffee after breakfast whoever tells you different you will not be treated well by Italian waiters. No, but what, what that is for me, I, I come to Italy, whenever I come to Italy, the smell of Italian coffee, you enter an espresso bar and it, it's it's this smell of, of freshly brewed coffee. Maybe there's some steamed milk in the background that I smell as well. Maybe somebody's um, eating a little pastry or a little cornetto or something in the morning. You're like, ah, yeah, that's the smell. Now I know I'm there, right? Or uh, when I'm back in my native culture in Germany, there are certain food items. Um, those of you who have never been to southern Germany, you don't know what a Leberkässemmel is. But when I when I when I can sink my teeth into a Leberkässemmel, then that means ah, yes, I have arrived. Right. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, so this, this is amazing, um, and it, and it really does. It surprised people how much I we you know in, with clients I will repeat this over and over again. I mean, plan your packages. I mean, pack plan what what you're going to pack. And they go, but I'm surely I'm going to be able to buy it there. I'll buy something that's similar. And I go, well, not really. I mean, you it, 
there, there's like, for example, the veggie. We get better veggie. Might people might say, isn't marmite the same in England? Well, no. You get me and a you get me and a British person in a room, and we is, will come to blows. Is, is Milo the same thing as Milo? Milo, oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So um, the, these are times, and it and it sounds seriously, it sounds so in, inconsequential in the in the calm light of day when you're just saying, oh, well, you know, I think I could probably get by with something that's different. But when you're really under stress, when you're under pressure, when you're missing your home, when you're away from family, the, I mean, the added stress of having to try and go out and find something that is, uh, that is equivalent of what you're used to just adds another layer. So why make it hard for yourself? I say, you know, pack these really, these items that you, when you think of other times when you've been kind of out of your comfort zone, under stress, you know, it, it, this is why they call it comfort food. These right. are things that, you know, that really bring us back to a sense of centeredness. And there's no better time to do that and have those at your fingertips is when you're away from home and you you need something. Yet. And sometimes it's the small things. For you, it might be Vegemite. For us, uh, we're a German family who moved abroad. It was a certain type of spicy mustard that we we packed in our suitcases and only dosed it carefully over the appropriate foods because no mustard tastes like it. And every other oh. mustard that was available on the shelves was was not up to the task, right? And it may not be because it's an expensive and exclusive or something special. It is a unique taste and the unique taste is connected to the unique emotion. And that's the same the same experience why you might enjoy something food or drink wise abroad. You're on vacation, you're in, I don't know, you're in Portugal and you've tried this Vino Verde and it, it was the best wine you've ever had sitting there on the on the shores of the Pacific uh, of the Atlantic in at the Algarve coast and you buy a whole box of it and take it home with you just to find out two weeks later that at home it simply doesn't taste the same it tastes the same because right. it's the air is different because the food you have with it is not the same and you're not in the same emotional state as you were while you were on vacation so our our senses play a huge role in how we perceive the world and how we make meaning of the world in which we interact, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, think about language. So the sound part of it is, again, being on vacation. If someone goes to Australia, they go, I can't wait to go to Australia. You mean there's a whole, they're like, everybody talks like you? I say, well, yeah, we do. I mean, we just, but we talk oh, a lot you know, broader. And then, of course, I say, well, that's great for a week or two. I mean, you might think you're in heaven and you just you got all these accents around you. But after a while, if you're going and living there, this the, the constant bombardment of different sounds and having to process the language, even though it's your native language, in this case, a common language, that sound and bombardment of, of, of that dissonance that is yeah. not comfort comfortable for you really has an impact on you and you know there, there's there's music too there's mu music is a great uh, a great connector for people so if you're if you go to a place where the music is different again great for sitting on the beach and listening to reggae in you know in Jamaica but if you if you were to live there and try and listen to it every single day you'd probably climb the walls oh well, uh, my wife would um, that's for sure we have this conversation <laughs> like about reggae, reggae. <laughs> now, it, it, it doesn't have to even be the whole music. It doesn't have to be melody. It could just be one specific sound. Like the what reminds me is when I enter Munich, a city in which I lived for a long time, the sound of the warning bell that the the cable, uh, the the streetcars, the, the the street, the trains that run in the street. What are they called? Tram. We call it trambahn, tramway. Well, what's, what's the word? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. tram, so, tram. The, the tram train or the the street i don't know whatever you know what i mean so when 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 they have this unique sounding bell when they are approaching a stop or crossing an intersection to warn motorists and pedestrians hey trains are coming so step aside or get out of the way that sound for me that's yeah, yeah. such an integral part of being in that place i don't have to see or hear or feel anything else if i only hear that sound i know I'm in that location. So our, our world is so much tied to these, these, these sensory experiences. It's amazing. Here's and, another and example in Australia where people go and visit and they say, oh, I've been to Australia. And the one thing I noticed is it sounds like Jurassic Park. 
<laughs> it's like, and really? I go, it, it is, it was unusual. I've had people say that. I said, it is, how did you people ever sleep? Because it is so noisy of a nighttime, especially in the summertime in Australia, even really? in the summer, there is so much noise. There's birds, there's crickets, there's animals, and it is cacophony of it. It is a, an orchestra uh, of sound, of natural nature sounds that when here I'm now aware of how quiet it is even in and I've been camping in you know some you know in in remote places and it's still very quiet here in Australia it's a it's like you are you are being screamed at by nature <laughs> it's like interesting I, I'm aware of that so next time I'll yeah. uh, when I ever go I'll bring my earplugs to make sure I get a good night you, you, you probably do yeah but a lot of people have said it sounds like Jurassic Park surely that's where they got the sounds from and Christina Remember, says you sound like Chris Hemsworth uh, can we tell uh, can we tell Christina that you are in fact Chris Hemsworth this is just your side in, in disguise um, right. absolutely um, Cecilia is asking an interesting question. So what if someone takes Vegemite and puts it on something unintended by the original culture? Mm -hmm. So she's thinking baked potatoes, but you say that's a no-go. So what, no, what no, if, no, we, no. if we culturally no, no, no. appropriate those, those tastes yeah. and smells? Look, I'm not going to poo-poo it because uh, the traditional way of eating Vegemite, I appreciate when somebody says, no, I actually put Vegemite in pasta. And I go, oh, yeah, okay, well, I could see that. It could... It could actually bring some saltiness, replace the what you might use in salt and that kind of thing, and bring a kind of an edge to it. So yeah, I'm not a I'm not averse to people using you know the the Vegemite in other ways. Um, you know, I've got to be culturally open, of course. This is my job, <laughs> but okay, I've got to practice what I preach. But you know, the the traditional way. You know, this gets back to kind of how hard wide we are. Here's the comment on that, Brett. Here's the comment on that. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, look, it's it's been it's been put on many things. And look, what about pizza? Let's not get into the pizza on uh, the pineapple on pizza discussion. No, I mean, or cheese <laughs> on. Uh, th th that's the worst offense. Uh, you eat a pasta with a with a seafood protein like a, a yeah. fish or, or or shrimp or any type any any type of meat out of the water, yeah. and then people grind their parm parmigiano over it. Like no cheese, right, 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 right. no one fish. What is wrong with you people? No. What about touch? We haven't been able to touch. So what what would be what would be something that's uh, that that is touch? I mean that's a little bit more difficult, right? So. Is there is are there something things that we touch or actually probably you mentioned it's not so much the touch it's the sensory ability of our skin right it doesn't have to be touch it could be the temperature that you feel yeah, yeah it yeah. could be air pressure it could be like if you're in Denver and get lightheaded because or anywhere up in the mountains and you get lightheaded because the oxygen content is different than it is at sea level that might or you, be or you've got more access to certain substances. Oh, that, oh, that's a different thing, right? That's, that's a different episode. We'll, <laughs> we'll do that later. Um, and I have to do some research around that first. Um, but you seem to know a lot about that. No, no. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm uneducated in the oh, area. Okay, Sorry about that. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> but we would touch it. I know it's, diff it's it's a bit different. But to me, when, when I return to my home culture and what I would touch in public would be like handrails or buttons to exit or enter the train to open the doors there is some there's a different yeah it, it, it to me I, I, I imagine it feels a bit different right it's it's a different mm. it's a different finish maybe a water yeah. the, the touch of water I think the way yeah, yeah. The, right. the, the, the 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 what's the 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 lime content or calcium content in waters is different from region to region so the way soap, dissolves in water and rinses off my skin is different in different parts of the world that i think is is, is a touch thing yeah yeah ab absolutely for sure i mean i i don't know i mean maybe this is getting you a bit ethereal but i think the touch of history i mean you, i i love i love touching a wall that is like mm. a thousand years of old right of a, mm -hmm. of, a, of a european church or something like that and and to me, that feel that would feel different than a brand new construction in some way, shape, or sure. form. Sure. Uh, and and I'm not sure whether that's a that, that is a physical touch or it's just the way the emotion I'm feeling, the connectedness I'm feeling through my interest in history. 
Well, um, I, I think it has to do with touch as well, because just what you described, I had this experience about 10 years ago. I took a delegation from the U.S. to Germany for, for business interests, and we went to my hometown where there is a monastery at the edge of town that's a thousand years or now a thousand and ten years old. But in 2010, they were celebrating their thousandth anniversary. And I took my American friend to this and and, and the banner uh, outside the, the monastery said from 1010 to 2010. And he walked in and he said, are, are, are you wanting me to believe this is a thousand years old and humans built this a thousand years ago? This, yes, that's what it is. And he was so overwhelmed by the history, the, the fact that it's so old because nothing in the US is that old at least not not to the majority population it's not a, the older stuff is maybe not known to the the majority of the current population mm. so he needed to touch it he needed to feel that and say wow this is experience history experience through my kinesthetic sensory input right mm -hmm. absolutely yeah very interesting All right. i love it. Let yeah. us know what you what what smells and sounds and tastes and touches and 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 sights you need to to feel like you are in a place for for real. So put that in the chat box. Some of you already have. We we would be very interested to hear and see and Listen. learn from you <laughs> and maybe touch you be touched by your words as you write them in the chat box. How would that be? That well, that would be yeah. And how would that happen? That would be through the effect of your, you know, something that really affects you in terms of an emotional sense, raises the uh, raises the sensory the senses of your skin, right? We 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 feel. I mean, it might be like kind of compared to the the heckles on the back of your neck raising if you you're confronted by something that's. Uh, a little that there's that there's that kind of feeling of the hair standing up on the back. You right. Know, does it physically do that? I don't know. I don't I you know, maybe it does, but so for, uh, for those of you who will not be watching after we conclude the session, after the music has played, Brett will get up, walk into his kitchen, open the fridge and open that jar of marmite. Uh no, not marmite, vegemite. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> to to have the the hair in his back sent up. So and 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 with a glass of Milo. My Milo, Milo, tomato, tomato. Emu, emu. I think we've had an episode around this, so go find you it. Say, you say it. tomato, I say tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. Or let's just wind it up and uh, come back tomorrow. How about that? Let's do that. Let's come back tomorrow. Two chaps, many cultures. See you again tomorrow. See you guys. Bye. <laughs>